I wanted to share a little bit of um, a story of mine from about a week ago. Uh, I had to go to the emergency room because I was having tremendous pain and I thought that I was um, having issues with my appendix. And um, the reason why I'm sharing this is because when I got there, I actually as I was driving up, uh, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, so I was luckily luckily able to have somebody come and be with my kids while I went. So, as I'm almost there, I realized that, shoot, I get seizures under stress and pain, especially like a 7 out of 10, that is stressful. So, I realized that um, after I did the, uh, went through the triage nurse, that I should probably mention that I have psychogenic non-epileptic seizures in case I have a seizure. I did to the triage nurse who was walking back, walking me back, and the reaction that I got was, um, I don't know, I just kind of like a, okay, whatever. You can tell your nurse when they get here. Well, the nurse took about 15, 20 minutes to get there. And that's, you know, that's typical. The thing is, if I were to have had a seizure, it would have kind of been a problem for them. And that's what I was trying to do is, is one, make sure that if I had a seizure, they didn't treat me as though I had epilepsy. Um, because that happens to be the hospital that I was admitted to and was in for five days before they discharged me with a diagnosis of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. So, mm, I began to feel increasingly nervous as I sat there and sitting right outside of the nurse's station hearing them talk about something that had happened um, where somebody was brought in and for uh, psychological challenges um, and one of the nurses had asked the other why they were brought in and, and he answered oh, probably for attention and chuckled. Now initially I wasn't, I don't know, I, I guess I, I'm trying not to get too judgmental because I don't know what his situation was um, and, you know, when you don't understand something, I, I sympathize and I hope that somebody takes the time to express to him that it's not a sensitive way of handling something like that because that's a real person. Um, and truly, even if it was for attention, there are such things as cries for help. So, if somebody is getting, trying to get your attention, give them your attention, please. I, I mean, I... <sighs> There's something that needs to be addressed if somebody is doing that for attention. So, um, a little bit of a tangent. As I sat there and I heard them talk about the situation, I realized that I might not be in the best situation being at the hospital in the emergency room all by myself with pretty much nobody there to advocate for me. And that really made me nervous. So luckily, one of my guardian angels, um, she's amazing, she had offered to come down and uh, at first I said no don't worry about it this is when I was driving in and after hearing this conversation I immediately texted her that I think I need an advocate because I don't know if I'm going to have a seizure and if I do I don't feel safe essentially I don't feel safe um, it's, it wasn't being taken seriously and it's a serious thing so it made me realize that we really don't have any advocates. As far as psychological challenges go, you get to a hospital and now here's my little thing. 
I recognize that at hospitals, it's medical. That's why people go there when they are feeling sick, not when they are feeling unbalanced or, um, you know, having ra rampant thoughts or rapid thoughts. Um, rampant too, I guess. That's not the place that you generally go to. And what I came to think about later is that where I was seeing a lack of sensitivity towards, um, towards people that are in there, they really are not equipped for something like that. Last week, my daughter had to have a surgery and in the, um, in the children's hospital, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. As we were checking in and we got after the surgery, actually, and we were being brought up to the room, um, I was telling the, um, I guess the charge nurse, that my daughter was really anxious and really scared about uh, what had just happened. She was feeling physically better, but as far as the stress of it goes, and she asked me, if I would like to have a social worker or a mental health professional come up to speak with her. Now, I could have dropped on the floor <laughs> when I heard that. I was so happy to have heard that. And it really made me curious why adults don't get that Satan treatment. I mean, we are, we are in just as much need as children. I mean, it's... You don't get as much attention as children do when they are adults. When you're an adult, you're basically on your own. And when you do have psychological challenges, such as uh, PNES, or my situation, bipolar, or um, ADD, you don't get a lot of sympathy. And I don't need sympathy. I've I'm very well adjusted and adapted to the lifestyle that I need to maintain um, or keep the framework of in order to live a successful um, day to day. And um, I'm very aware of, of my needs. So I consider myself very fortunate because the, the journey that I've been on since I was mm, let's say like 12, 13 years old. Um, once I hit about 18, I started with a lot of um, uh, psychotherapy. Um, so basically talk therapy. And I was able to work out a lot of the things before I even got to the PNES, which shocking, <laughs> it was shocking to me. I thought that I had dealt with so many of the toxic elements in my life and I didn't even realize that they were actually all around me. <laughs> I, I kept a special select few um, that, that I love and, you know, and I didn't want to keep out of my life. Um, when I saw how much it affected me, then I really, I didn't have a choice you know I have to choose myself I'll, and in every situation I will always choose myself so it was a real interesting situation at that point um, and I am very 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 fortunate because on the other end of the PNES it's been um, it's been a while uh, since my last seizure it's a month I think <laughs> um, and basically essentially I had one seizure one big grand mal seizure and maybe two um, and then the ones that follow I kind of relate to as um, the grand mal seizure being like the earthquake and the seizures after that being like the um, aftershocks because it really is like my body is is still vibrating from it and it's a little bit of a cycle. I don't know if anyone else has that, but that's my experience. Um, and that's why I'm sharing it, because if you do have it, you're not alone. And if you are somebody who's trying to learn about psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, you can refer to it as PNES for your own sanity. <laughs> uh, 
um, or how I like to refer to it as my penis. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna blush now. Um, kudos to you to find out. And if you're watching this and you have this, you're not alone. I want to share my story and if you feel comfortable, we're at a very amazing time right now. We have such a great opportunity because this past, let me see, today is Monday, this past weekend on Saturday there was the first conference of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures up in New Jersey. Now I'm going to look on YouTube and see if they streamed any of that information, but they had, um, they had a clinic that specializes in, in seizures, epileptic and non-epileptic, um, present, and they had several people from that clinic present. So I'm excited. I'm going to check that out this weekend. I mean, I'm going to check that out sometime this week to find out if there was. Uh, so, wow, major tangent there. Oh, back to the hospital. My friend did come. I didn't have any seizures. Um, I realized that there really is a need to, to be able to request an advocate, a mental health advocate, for every level, um, not just children, but adults. I mean, it's, we get, unfortunately, once we get to a certain age and we have not been diagnosed or we have not um, been able to stabilize our medications or our moods, we're looked at so differently than children. Children are just annoying. Adults are, oh my gosh, like we are, we just become like this incredible bother to society. And it's almost as though we're treated as though um, it's intentional. And good lord, I don't know anyone who chooses. I mean, I, I wouldn't change anything because I really love who I am and I love all the gifts that come with all my challenges um, and that in itself, I love challenges. So all that being said, I think that if you feel comfortable sharing your story, it would be a great thing. It, there are so many people out there. There are a lot of different people who post on YouTube. If we could come together and put videos together in one YouTube channel, that would be amazing because there is strength in numbers. Um, that there just is. And now that there is some awareness about it that has been generated, thank you. Uh, oh gosh. This I don't know. I, I'm sure other people have the memory issue after this seizures. Um, to you, Dr. I think it's Lorna, um, for bringing out this awareness, for pushing for the conference, and um, thank you for your book. Uh, I have not had a chance to read it, but just the fact that it's out there and it's available to people who are looking for answers. Um, it's called uh, Psychogenic Non-Epileptic Seizures, A Guide. So if you, um, if you need a book, if you need some information, you can go to the website. Uh, I will actually put on to the site, onto my um, channel, the, um, the link so that you can get more information. And I think that was my last tangent. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm grateful for it, everyone who's watching and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my story. I encourage you, if you do feel comfortable, please share your story. And if there is interest to put together one YouTube channel for psychogenic non epileptic seizures, the, uh, oh, what are we? Um, the experience. Uh, the person with the experience, I don't know, not, I don't want to say patient because I'm not patient of anybody's for this anyway, uh, but I think we should do it. I think that we will become loud enough to be recognized and that's what we really want because I don't feel alone. I have amazing people around me and I have the, um, the tools to be able to navigate this. There are so many people who are alone, who don't have people who understand, who don't understand themselves. And unfortunately, there are consequences to feeling so lost and so alone. 
and um, and unfortunately we've w witnessed it so many times um, before and you know I personally myself I just <laughs> actually was inspired to look for um, look for something from my from my brother uh, his um, the box that I keep with his stuff in it this is my brother and my brother's one of those people so um, not diagnosed no tools I'm not around anymore so Let's share our stories. Thanks.